Well, greetings to my church family, and welcome to our Sunday night devotional. And, uh, and I know that some of you have different times throughout the week that you watch this, and I think that's wonderful. Uh, I always try to make this about Jesus, uh, and I always try to uh, make this a, a moment of either challenge or encouragement. And so uh, looking at uh, the helper is what we're looking at uh, this evening. And I think that uh, how many times in life have we benefited from someone's help? I know that I have been the recipient of other people's help more times than I can remember. Uh, but just for example, uh, I remember uh, whenever I moved to, to Lewis County, uh, it would have been convenient if I had moved on a Saturday and it would have been a time when other, most of the congregation wasn't working. I remember Bruce McIntyre, when he was here several years ago, telling a story. Uh, it was during uh, his homecoming sermon. And he told a story about uh, you know, pulling up in a U-Haul and uh, you know, that seemed like half the congregation was there to help them unload. And just what a, what a feeling that was. And I remember thinking to myself, well, they didn't do that for me. But of course, then I realized, well, it's because, dummy, you... You moved in four different waves, and only one of them was on a Saturday. I do remember a Saturday that uh, we probably had about seven or eight people here to help out, and that was wonderful. But, uh, but uh, I do remember uh, one of those times that my neighbor, Gabby Spears, he works with the Lom worships with the Lomax congregation. But Gabby's been a fantastic neighbor for the last eight years, and Gabby uh, didn't hesitate. He saw the, the U-Haul pull up, and he saw us bring the ramp down and, and started unloading some stuff and and that was the trip where we had uh you know stacy was joining me and it was in the winter and uh so she had found a job in murray county and was able to move down and uh so we had the washer and dryer uh up to that point she had come down for weekends and then taken my dirty clothes back and then on her next weekend would bring clean clothes back and so uh, she was very uh, helpful to do that for me. But now she was going to be here, so she wanted her washer and dryer close at hand. So we, uh, Gabby helped us get those unloaded and into the utility room. And of course, if you've ever moved a washer and a dryer, the dryer is no big deal. There's not much to a dryer. But that, uh, the washer with that big old galvanized drum, uh, those things weigh a ton. And uh, having Gabby uh, and, and a, good, a good appliance dolly made all the difference in the world. Uh, I think about uh, the, the first three or four years that I worked here, uh, it was frustrating at times because I had been accustomed to having a church secretary who could do anything and everything. And, uh, and so I got here and I was the only person in the building for a while. And when they hired Kay Duncan to be the, the secretary here, it was a life changer for me because so many of the little tasks uh, that, that would interrupt some of the things that I was doing, uh, not that they're unimportant, they are important, but that they would interrupt what I was doing or what my plans were for the day. And she took all of that off my plate. And so what a difference that made for me is that now all of a sudden she's doing all those little things, but boy, as you well know, I'm sure little things when you stack them on top of one another, uh, can be a skyscraper. And so she took that skyscraper off of my plate and allowed me to focus on just on ministry. And what a tremendous blessing that's been. And I have, I think I've loved uh, almost every moment of serving the Hohenwald Church of Christ ever since then. But Jesus, in, in John 16, if you'll turn there with me, if you can, uh, is, is talking about the Holy Spirit, and He is promising the Helper. And so, let's, I want to look today at uh, John 16, beginning with verse 5. But now I am going to Him who sent me. None of you ask me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, 
I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. And so uh, this morning in, in our message uh, from John, uh, John 12, uh, there was that, Jesus used that phrase, the, the, fr- the prince of this world. And of course, that's the way he's referring to the devil or as we've come to know him in recent weeks from our Sunday morning series, Old Scratch. And so, uh, you know, when I start thinking more about the devil's presence and the devil being real, then the more I see the devil, how many times the devil really is mentioned in Scripture. And so, and so yeah, verse 11, uh, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. So let's think about that for a moment, church. We've got Jesus departing from us. And so now, baptized believers can experience the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And indwelling is one of those church words, right? It's not, you don't, you don't you just go around saying, oh, the, you know, indwelling in some other context or use that in a sentence every day. It's one of those church words, but it just means that God's Spirit is inside of us, that God's Spirit is in our physical person. And, uh, and that's, that can be, at the same time, I think it can be equally awesome and comforting, and maybe if we're in a place where we've been dealing with some sin in our life, it, that, can be a little, that can be a little concerning. But uh, that's why the, the phrase is used that we should not grieve the Spirit. And that's because the Spirit is, is inside of us. And when we're engaged in sin, um, the, the, Spirit, you know, the Spirit doesn't want any part of that. And so the Spirit is experiencing a heavy form of grief because we're engaging in sin and the Spirit has to be present and engage in that with us. Not that the Spirit is sinning, but that the Spirit is is, uh, present when that sin is being committed. And so, you know, David is a psalmist in, I believe it's Psalm 51, when he is is, uh, repenting of uh, his sin with Bathsheba and having Bathsheba's uh, husband, Uriah, killed. And uh, he, he says those words, uh, you know, give me a clean heart and don't take your spirit from me, Lord. And so David has an awareness of God's spirit. And he's saying, don't take your spirit from me. And so, uh, and so Jesus here is saying, you know, all that that you've struggled with, when you struggle with making decisions, when you struggle with knowing which direction to turn, uh, I'm going to take all that away. Just as just as I've given those examples of uh, of a neighbor and a coworker who were such a blessing and made my life uh, easier, made my life more fulfilled, one for a day and one for every day that we work together. And, and so what, what Jesus is saying is, I'm going to give you, and I love how God's Spirit or the Holy Spirit has different names. Uh, Jesus calls it the Helper. Uh, at different, different places in Scripture, uh, the Holy Spirit is referred to as the Advocate. And if you know what an Advocate is, someone who speaks on your behalf or someone who you might say goes to bat for you. 
And so, and so we have an advocate. We have a helper. Uh, he refers in this passage, he refers to the Spirit as a guide. But then he expounds on that and says, the Spirit only tells you what I tell it to tell you. And so Jesus, seated at the right hand of the Father, is still very much a part of our lives. But he's doing it now through the Holy Spirit that dwells in each one of us. And I think that is a remarkable and beautiful thing. And then I want to skip down to the end of John 16. And this is a verse. Uh, you can't go, you can't listen to me preach uh, too many times without hearing me reference John 16, 33. It's one of my favorites because church, um, the world can be a tough place. The world can be painful. As I mentioned in my message this morning, you know, Jesus uh, talking in, in John's gospel refers to the world as a dark place. And that's why he calls us or challenges us to be children of light uh, for this dark world. And, but with Jesus, these words in John 16, 33 are so amazingly comforting to me. Where Jesus says, and we talked this morning about comfort and about safety. And Jesus acknowledges that if we're actually doing the work that we're called to do, there are going to be times when we feel unsafe and we feel uncomfortable. And so Jesus here says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And what Jesus is saying there, church, is I have overcome the world all that darkness all that darkness I have overcome and because you are with me and next week we're going to talk about where Jesus talks about the vine and the branches and about abiding with him and so you know uh, if, if we think about uh, being with Jesus being yoked with Jesus uh, having a, a relationship with Jesus he's saying you know that that through me, you too have overcome the world. And church family, I take great comfort in that. I hope you do as well. That uh, in this world you will have trouble, but, uh, but that in me you will have peace. And so let's be comforted by that. Let's, uh, let's be aware of the Holy Spirit within us. Uh, let's avoid sin. And when we do sin, but let's take comfort that a repentant heart is a beautiful thing in God's eyes. And uh, we have a helper. We have an advocate. We have a comforter. We have a guide. And let's rejoice in what God has given us. I invite you to bow with me. Holy Father, I just thank you for the love, mercy, and grace that you continue to lavish on us each and every day. Help us in turn to be people who not only are recipients of the love, mercy, and grace you give, but that we in turn will reflect that love, mercy, and grace to those around us. Help us to take comfort in the helper, the advocate, the guide that is the Holy Spirit within us, Father. I ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. May God bless you all in the week ahead.